Okay, great. So uh, let's get started. Uh, thanks uh, everybody for joining us, uh, either right now or uh, or afterwards. Uh, welcome to uh, to our webinar today, where we'll be talking about mostly our flying lab in uh, Tanzania and uh, and introducing our flying lab coordinator Yusuf. Uh, just a quick uh, couple words about uh, We Robotics for those of you who haven't heard of us. Our our main goal as uh, as an international NGO is to scale the impact of local projects through the use of appropriate robotic solutions. And what that really means is we're trying to get robots, different kinds of robots, in the hands of the people. So basically, um, the concept of We Robotics is to have a series of flying labs, uh, as we call them, in uh, different countries around the world. And the goal of these flying labs is really to create, uh, to put robotic solutions to social good problems in uh, in the healthcare sector, in the, in the uh, environmental sector, in the development center, sector. So all different parts of the social good sector to to really make the robots accessible through uh, training, through uh, rental of drones, accessibility of drones, uh, to the point where we also try to create businesses around drones. There's basically our four-phase process where we, for, for each lab, we try to identify problems, social good problems that can benefit from a drone technology, um, whether it's a robotic uh, ground, aerial, or a maritime robots. We try to build the lab and build capacity locally uh, through training and through pilot projects. Then we try to scale the impact of these projects by, uh, by creating a market, creating opportunity around these robotic solutions. And finally, we try to, uh, to really make the technology sustainable locally by helping incubate local businesses around these robotics and software solutions. The real topic of today, however, is not just We Robotics, it's our Tanzania Flying Labs. So this is um, an initiative that we started a few months ago in uh, Tanzania, which you see is a beautiful beach uh, in Zanzibar. Uh, and here we're mostly starting with aerial robotics, and the presentation today is going to be done by um, Yusuf. So if we go to the next slide, our local lab coordinator, Yusuf Said Yusuf, I'm going to present a little bit about his works today, and, uh, and we could see him here a few months ago with uh, the drones that we've been using on site. So without talking too much from my side, Yusuf, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Adam, for a good uh, introduction of Web Robotics and uh, what it is doing in the world, and uh, thank you, Piru, for making this uh, webinar happen now. As uh, what Adam said, my name is Yusuf Said Yusuf, and I'm presenting We Robotics, uh, a local flying labs coordinator in Tanzania, and especially we need to understand that Tanzania is uh, well founded by two nations, like we have Zanzibar and uh, Tanganyika, and these two nations, that's what's our so called today Tanzania. So the outline of this presentation today is from the Tanzania Flying Labs. Uh, I will introduce myself a bit more and uh, also we will have a time to understand what um, during the initiative of Tanzania Flying Labs, the Bukoba days and events and also we will understand the Zanzibar mapping initiative in which I am involved in on, the, on this really great project. So um, currently I'm living in, in, in Zanzibar, which is uh, the other part of Tanzania. And uh, I've been just selected uh, a one month ago to be like a new flying lab coordinator in We Robotics. And uh, technically I can just say myself like I'm UB. I've been working on this technology now for almost uh, five months, but I've been working so massively on the flying uh, robotics. And um, uh, after that, it's like I've been selected, or I got an opportunity to work with We Robotics to present and uh, to see how we can really use this robotic solution in solving different problems within Tanzania and creating such a lab which is now available in other parts in, uh, of the world, like Nepal. 
And uh, uh, directly, I, I would like to shift to Bukoba Euro survey, in which we did because of the of the earthquake, which has just happened on on October. And uh, the main goal of this survey was to understand how the aerial photographs can help to analyze the damage of the of the Bukoba earthquake. Is we are all know that whenever the earthquake is happening, it doesn't. Uh, primarily plan that the damage will be in in what situation, but we need to understand if there is a possibility to use the, uh, the drone images as aerial images, and then we can, we can use those images to survey and to understand how much damage is really caused. And uh, for that, it's like we, there was like four areas of interest that we mapped with other type of aerial or aerial robotics which we know as a cumulus one and also it was the, the opportunity to train two representatives who joined the team and those representatives we had uh, one who who is Khadija, a student from the State University of Zanzibar taking Bachelor of Arts and IT application management and it was myself. So first area in which was selected from that Bukoba survey, it was like the, the city zone of the Bukoba. And uh, from what we are seeing from the simple image of the aerial photo, it wasn't like the city wasn't too much damaged with the, with the, with the earthquake. And uh, that is what it seemed from the image. And that is because most of the image, I will show it later, that the houses on this area has not been completely damage but they were damaged like they're having crack inside so for this kind of images uh, for this kind of aerial photograph it it is not that easy to say you will understand or you will analyze the aerial photograph uh, because you won't be able to understand what are the cracks inside of these buildings that we are having so in fact the Bukoba city the city town of Bukoba it wasn't that much affected with the with the with the earthquake on the other areas in which this area it was near nearby to the airport and uh, also we had uh, the north zone this area has been affected and uh, we will see later on the slide that we have some schools from what we are seeing now we have a school which is really damaged by the earthquake but the school is not completely destroyed but the cracks that are found on the building of the schools, uh, it cannot be used until it is repaired. So the the moment we were there, it was like the the government was looking uh, looking ahead to try to demo to the de, uh, to de, to destroy to break up the schools and try to rebuild it because it won't be easy to just say we they are going to fix on the cracks and the students going inside. And uh, the other part, it was like on, on Maruku zone, that was the, the other area within Bukoba. And this area, the houses are more scattered, it is not like uh, they're, they're staying together. And in this area also, the houses has not been like uh, totally demolished, but they, they have crack inside. And uh, by using the aerial photograph, it, is, it won't be that easy to say you will analyze this kind of terror. And uh, also we have, uh, we, we, we were like also within the north of Bukoba, we have, we, from the aerial photograph we found the school which is totally uh, uh, destroyed by the earthquake. And then uh, at the post-survey post, uh, post survey after the earthquake we found out like the school is now re, uh, started to be reconstructed again. And uh, if we can find the, the, the overall data set of what we talk now, it is available uh, public, publish on the, on, on, on the link below. Um, and then we, we had to ask ourselves is, uh, if the image was that useful and we found like yes, the image was somehow useful because some of the, some of the buildings which we need to understand how the destruction was about of the earthquake we saw it like the destructions completely destroyed all, all those buildings. 
and uh, some of the houses is what we are seeing in the pictures above is like they were really destructed on the walls and some of the crack were found inside. If you see from the pictures that we have three colleagues uh, staying ahead of it and one woman on the door, that house is like destroyed but it is not completely destroyed because it has a crack inside of the of the of the the walls cracked on the inside so that for that you cannot see clearly with the aerial uh, photograph and uh, for that few what we did in Bukoba we also used the time as I said for training some uh, some of the colleagues and from the first picture that we see we had uh, our, our trainer Adam from We Robotics, co-founder, and myself, and the and, and the lady which I've just introduced her a, a little while ago, Maria, and that was the first time, in fact, we are we are starting to to understand uh, the other type of long-range robotics aerial, and that is the Cumulus one, and then uh, the second picture we are seeing that uh, that is the moment which I have learned myself how to launch it because I've been launching the EB a bit more and on the third picture is like now the locals the elders they were not behind of the of the technology they were asking questions and then uh, we tried to explain to them and that the the, the old person hold the, the cocked drone and he was trying to understand what could be the difference between that drone and his photo and then we had to explain to them after that, uh, the second drop, the image now to the moment which we went back to, to Zanzibar and Unguja Islands. And from that, now we had to take a lead on presenting to our fellow staff and students within the, within the ZMI, in which I will explain about it later on. And uh, from there, we had to understand because they were curious to understand the other types of drone. In fact, they have been using the EB, but now we told them about the, the cumulus one. They were really curious to understand what is that. So we had to go to the fields and try to show them how the cumulus is working and everything. And from the second picture, we, we had to show them what are the really difference between what they have been uh, using so far and what we just so uh, we, what we just saw in, in Bukoba and that the second picture we have uh, Khadija who is showing the the other peoples how to, to fly plan and control the cumulus on drone and in fact we didn't leave behind the kids because they are the new generation in which we are targeting at the Tanzania flying labs we need to understand we need to influence and also we need to motivate kids uh, continue learning so that they they are having the dreams of having such kind of access of robotics. So in the last picture, it was myself, like trying to see to the really uh, little kids and try to explain to them what did the device and what are this robotic and what exactly it was doing, so that they can be impressed by themselves and then uh, they can they can get to understanding what exactly we are doing within their area. So that was about Bukoba and uh, what happened. So Bukoba, we tried to take some pictures in which we are still on analyzing them. And uh, what we did is with the training. 